Do you love candy? I love candy. Trout love candy too, especially hoe candy. Stick around, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my tying bench. If you've been here before, it's good to see you again. If this is your first time visiting, I hope you like this video. Please look around, have a look at the other videos I have on this channel as well. Consider subscribing, it's easy, just hit that subscribe button below. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, click that little bell icon right beside the subscribe button and you'll get noticed every time I upload a video just like this one. Today we're tying Mike Arnold's hoe candy. Mike Arnold is the manager at Monster Lake Ranch in Wyoming, and this was the first time I'd ever seen this fly, and it worked great on the Stillwater Rainbows on that ranch. They loved it. Caddis were coming off. They loved its silhouette. They loved the kicking action of the white rubber legs. But guess what? It's also a fly you can use on rivers and streams as well. So here's the pattern recipe. Let's get tying. And if you look below, you'll also see the recipe there too, along with links to all the tying materials and the tools and equipment I used on today's video. So I'd like to introduce you to Mike Arnold. He's the head guide at Monster Lake Ranch in Cody, Wyoming. His hoe candy. Great little dry fly that works so well for us on a recent trip down there chasing caddis on top, which you can see on my vlog. So into the jaws of the vise, I've got a Daiichi 1760. This is a two extra heavy, two extra long curved hook. And these uh, hooks work well for these kind of flies because they make them land properly due to their heavy uh, bend and point. The fly is going to right uh, land properly all the time. So we're going to use hot orange tying thread. So we're just going to start. In this case, this is, make sure that's in the vise firmly. This is 80 MFC. It's going to get a good thread base. away the excess, take it down into the bend about halfway between the point and the crushed down barb. For the tail, I'm going to use some golden pheasant tippet. So the way to do this is not to actually strip, because of the way the, the feather goes, we want to keep those all nice and aligned. So the best way to do it is not to strip them from the stem, but to actually take your scissors and trim. If you strip, they'll become misaligned. So they're nice and we want to tie these in about half the shank length long, which is about just in front of the band. That black band on the feather. And I'll increase the tension. So my first couple of wraps were controlling and firm, but I don't want that tail to flare too wildly. I'm going to keep it kind of gathered. So we'll just secure that up. The shank, trim off the excess, and then work our way back almost to the base of the tail. And we're going to tie in the body. And there's lots of different body materials. We're going to use ice dub. And Mike, actually, the one that worked well for him was to be tied with UV shrimp pink. You could use golden brown, you could use brown, you could use dark olive. I think I'm going to tie this, out of respect to Mike, in the shrimp pink color he did. The fish were taking caddis when we were using this, and they certainly weren't a shrimp pink color, but it was also a lot of hoppers around, and it's just a silhouette. I think they just like this fly, so they were eating it, we were feeding it to them. So I'm just going to, I've moistened my fingers slightly, and I'm just going to twist this ice stub, sparse little clumps that are easy to twist on. Don't use too much. You can always add dubbing. And you notice I've kept a little bit of the thread bare. In fact, I'm going to give that a better twist there. And now I can come in and use my thread to aim my dubbing so it starts right at the base of the tail. Get that tied in. Make sure my tail stays. But liking how that's starting to flare up. There we go. That's better. I'm just going to dub a nice even body all the way up. 
about again two thirds, three quarters on there. We might need a little touch more, just a pinch. Down, and there we've got that. Now we're going to put a wing on the fly, and for a wing, we're going to use some widow's web in white. So I've taken off a maybe a half a gape wide width, and I'm just going to tie this in place just in front of the body, come forward a little bit, and then I'm going to take the remainder of this and fold it back over. You can wind back onto the body ever so slightly. Turn all that down, compact it. I'm going to come in with my scissors and trim this about halfway up the tail. Make sure you've always got a few little stragglers here that don't want to come. Trim those out of the way. We've got a nice little, very nice visible wing for us to see. So Michael also likes to put a little added flash in the wing, so how we're going to do that is a little crystal hair. So just lay that on there and kind of, I've used my fingers to sort of splay it out. And then I'm going to take the remainder that's forward here, kind of fan it out as well, and fold it back onto the wing, like so. So there we go, we got a little bit of crystal hair. Or Sometimes it's sold as crystal flash, it's all pretty well the same stuff, but it's just going to shimmer throughout over the wing like that. Now we need to put more buoyant wing material on there, tell, or another buoyant material is probably a better thing to do because that widow's web's pretty buoyant, and that's some deer hair. You just heard me thumping off camera. We're going to tie in some deer hair, and I'm going to measure it so it's about from the eye of the hook, the tips are even with the tail. Turn this around reconfirm that measurement because we're going to tie this in in a bullet head style. Again I'm going to come in to little manipulate some of this. I'm just going to pre-trim this a little bit. I'm just going to kind of push that around so it envelops the head. One wrap two wraps, now I tighten and work that thread back. And if I've done that right, which I think I have, now I've got to come in and carefully trim those butts. That's why I pre-trimmed them. It just makes trimming them a little easy. If I left them uh, those butts untrimmed, they would be blending in with the hair and just generally getting in the way. Looks pretty good. And then we can, if it spins, that's good too. It helps. And we're going to bring this back roughly to the base of the wing. And now I'm just going to take all of these fibers like so. It may take a couple of attempts. Try not to stab myself in the process. I'm just going to hold. Sometimes you can get tools for this, but I'm just going to now take one wrap, two wraps. Now I've made a nice little bullet head. And I'm building up a nice little yellow hot spot, if you will. And so yellow orange, hot orange little band, like so. And what Mike does with his as well is he trims everything on the underside so the fish can see that body color. That's all trimmed away like so. I've got one errant fiber there, I can just pluck him out of the way. And then what we're going to do now is put some rubber legs on it. So these are centipede legs, a round rubber, MFC centipede legs, and they're in medium. So I'm going to take two strands, secure them on top, like so, and then move them around to the side. So grab the near side, grab both 
ends and just sort of wiggle them into position. Do the same on the far side. You want that nice wide band because that helps splay the legs out. If that band is too narrow, those legs are going to be like so. And we don't want them like that. We want them to kick out. So when we strip these on the water, it looks like a terrestrial's legs. They kick, they flop. And we're going to trim these front two so we can do our whip finish. Maybe shank length. We can trim them up a little bit later. We're going to add some adhesive. In this case, Solara's bone dry to our tying thread. I got a little drip on the leg. Let's wipe that off. A couple more wraps. Whip finish, weaving our whip finisher in and around those legs. We need a few. Come in with our UV light, cure that, and that hot orange thread just pops. Now we're going to do some trimming. I've got an errant deer hair fiber here, and then we're going to trim our back legs, gather them both, trim them just even with the wing. I'm just going to neaten up that one a little bit, shorten the front legs a bit. So there you have it. Mike Arnold's hoe candy worked so well for us down in Cody, Wyoming. and also turned out to be a great little grayling fly up in the Northwest Territories.